welcome to Life and Liberty Radio with David Householder. I'm Josh Jose, and together you and I are taking another step toward freedom, both spiritual and political. So get comfortable, breathe in, and ignite your imagination. Envision a society that is spiritually deep and truly free. It's easy if you try. Well, today I would like to talk about Clarence D. Mumford. Clarence D. Mumford was just sentenced to seven years in federal prison and a $167,000 fine for running a cheating ring. And basically, he got people certified as teachers passing tests by doctoring records over 15 years. And there were some 20, 30 people involved in this. And he got about $120,000 out of it over the years. And uh, he's been put in jail for seven years. This guy is not dangerous. Uh, This guy is someone we're mad at. This is a, a, a key distinction. There was a man named Pat Nolan, who was an assemblyman, California assemblyman from Glendale, California, which is right in the the valley in Los Angeles. And he was convicted of election fraud and was sent to jail. And during the time he was there, he made a crucial distinction. And that is between the people that were mad at and the people that were afraid of. And the purpose of prison, the purpose of jail, is to protect us from people that are dangerous, people we're afraid of, people that we don't want out on the streets. The people that we're mad at are filling our jails. And we're mad at Clarence D. Mumford. And uh, the truth is, we are spending $50,000 a year to keep him in jail, which is what it costs to go to Harvard. It just doesn't make any sense. We're spending money on him when he should be paying us back. Now, how's he supposed to pay back $167,000 when he's in jail? It doesn't work and it won't work. And so we need to set something up. The truth is we can do a lot better with probation than we used to be able to do because of technology. There's all kinds of like ankle bracelets and stuff that people can wear electronically. We can keep very good tabs on them and we can basically keep them confined to a very small area if we want to do any kind of punishment type of thing. But I think the best punishment is restitution, restitution to society, to have him pay back the school districts and for him to do community service. And we can definitely keep better tabs on that than we used to be able to do with probation officers making phone calls once in a while. So, you know, why, why? Why do we have them pay their debt to society by having us pay taxes and support a bloated prison system? We incarcerate more people in the United States than anywhere else in the world per capita. And we do that because we have gotten confused between people that we're mad at and people that we're afraid of. Now, please hear me. I believe we need prisons, jails for people that uh, shouldn't be out on the streets. But Clarence Mumford is not one of them. Clarence Mumford should be paying back double, triple what he did. And he should be promoting the schools and making making uh, speeches to classes about honesty and the importance of honesty. Jim Baker, for goodness sake, he was convicted of fraud. And he was, he was, he was sentenced to forty-five years in federal prison. Has there ever been anyone less dangerous than Jim Baker? Jim Baker should have once again been out on the speaking circuit, talking about the importance of honesty and the importance of uh, avoiding fraud and the consequences of that, and should have been paying everyone back. Uh, for goodness' sake, there's there's hundreds and hundreds of people he should be paying back. And the only way for him to do that is to make some money. So get him out in the society and have him make some money, which brings me to another point. I think that uh, I don't want to make a law like this, but I I would urge all of you who put together uh, job applications to stop asking people if they've been convicted of something. Do you have any idea what that does to our jail population? I have so many people come to me as a pastor and say, Pastor, they're asking me uh, if I've been convicted, and I've been convicted 20 years ago of something. And if I put this down there, I won't get the job. And these people go unemployed for years, and guess what they turn to to make money? Crime. And they end up going back to jail. So so please, uh, those of you who hire people, would you leave that off there? When people are are free again from jail, and they have paid their debt to society, let them make money with you. Give them a chance. Give them a hand up. Let them make something 
of themselves. And uh, the last thing I want to talk about is, is drugs. We have too many people in jail for drug possession. Now, drug trafficking, that's another thing. Drug trafficking, that's dangerous. Those are people we're afraid of. Those are people that hang around grade schools and sell drugs to kids. Those people should be in jail. But people who've had drug possession? We've got a, a guy from our church who did serious jail time because they found one small piece of uh, illegal drugs in his car. And, you know, the guy's not dangerous. He's not. And we're holding him back from his own development, his own ability to contribute to society. So uh, we need to cut down our jail population by a ton, just by an absolute ton. But we lack the political will to do so. And I'm including a link to Judge Jim Gray's article on the same topic. Let's save our jails for people that we're afraid of. So put some sunshine and water on these fresh ideas and keep taking that next step toward freedom. Join us every weekday for the latest life and liberty ideas. The views expressed on this program are purely those of the presenter and not necessarily those of the advertisers or organizations or persons with which the presenter has a relationship. Please click on the Amazon banner at the top of the life and liberty page and consider doing all your online shopping through this portal. See you tomorrow.